to this first Sunday of the year 2019. And I pray that this service will answer in your life. Let me hear your louder. Amen. Amen. I want to appreciate God, the head of the church, and God's servant, our Father in the house, for this privilege to share God's word with us in this third service. And I pray that the same grace that manifested in the first two services will back this spoken word as I speak in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Daddy, thank you and God bless you, sir. The theme of the month was declared earlier on as prayer and fasting facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. Can we equate together, everybody? Prayer and fasting facilitate fulfillment. Let it make it better and louder right now. Prayer and fasting facilitates fulfillment of prophecy. And I pray that in these 21 days, of waiting upon the Lord in prayer and fasting, every prophecy shall be fulfilled in your life. Amen. Let me hear your louder. Amen. Amen. Our Sunday teaching series for the month of January, as unveiled by God's servant, the, um, the first and second services, is engaging the power of prayer and fasting for dominion. Engaging the power of prayer and fasting for dominion. Our text is Daniel chapter 7. I'd like for us to read together verse 27. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. Can we all read with a loud voice? Want to go? And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Are you part of the saints of God? So dominion and greatness is God's agenda for the year. And I know that it shall come to pass speedily in your life and my life in Jesus' mighty name. While opening the teaching in the first service, one of the things God's servant said is every prophetic word is ordained to be fulfilled. God does not toil with words. What he says is what he means. What God will not do, he will say. God, the Bible says, is not a man. That should lie. When God says it, then His power backs the wall for fulfillment. So if God said, This year is our year of dominion, or what is this year for you? You have forgotten what is this year for you? you just believe it. Nothing short of dominion will be hanging around you this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Every word of God, every prophetic word is ordained for fulfillment. Every prophetic agenda, as God's servant the bishop said, is an open door which usually attracts opposition. That is why we don't watch prophecy to be fulfilled, we want it into fulfillment. The devil does not have any original agenda. He waits for God's agenda and do the opposite. If God says it's the year of dominion, all the devil is planning is the opposite of dominion. He wants to ensure that that dominion does not come to pass in your life. But I can tell you that that devil is a liar. Come on, I said that devil is a liar. I said that devil is a liar. So every prophetic word is for our change of level. And you know, every change of level attracts new devil. That is why prayer and fasting is very important. Paul said, speaking to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 verse 18, he said, according to the word, to the prophecy, that have gone ahead of you, that thou mightest war a good warfare. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, Paul says, 
a great and effectual door is open unto me. The year is loaded for good things. Loaded for amazing things. Things that eyes have not seen. Things that ears have not heard. But, he said, there are many adversaries. The greater the prophecy, the greater the opposition. That is why you must not be casual in order not to end up a casualty in the year. That is why you must take this 21 day, beginning from tomorrow, serious. God has spoken. But what becomes of you in the course of the year will be determined by you, not by God. Come and say, I hear. Talk to me, say, I hear. So that is why we are called to engage in this prayer and fasting in order to silence every opposition and have a smooth ride into our next level. And that shall be someone's experience this year in Jesus' mighty name. Fasting. Spiritually, we know expedite answers to prayer. It facilitates speedy answers to prayer. That is, everything that prayer does or everything that prayer can do fasting is in it isaiah 58 verse 6 and verse 9 isaiah 58 verse 6 it is not the fast that i have chosen to lose the bounds of wickedness to undo the heavy bodies and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke verse 9 he said then after you have fasted then thou shalt call and the Lord shall answer. So he says, Amen. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, Here I am. So fasting facilitates speedy answers to prayer. I'd like for us to also know that we are in the last days. And from scripture, the last days are days of prayer and fasting in the body of Christ. Matthew goes to chapter 9. Verse 14 and 15. Matthew 9, 14 and 15. The disciple of Jesus of John came to Jesus. Why others are fasting, but your disciple refused to fast? In the next verse, verse 15, he said, And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? He said, But the days will come. The days will come. These are the days right now. When the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then they shall what? They shall fast. They shall fast. The same thing repeated in Mark, right in Mark chapter 2, verse 18 to 19. The same thing. Luke chapter 5, verse 33 to 35. Emphasis on the fact that these are the days of fasting. When you engage frequently or you live a lifestyle of fasting, Things work very fast. Nothing gets slow for fasting people. The truth of the matter is, fasting cannot kill. Fasting cannot what? It cannot kill. It might be a punishment to the body, but it is a punishment to the destiny. Permit that grammar. You polish your body. You punish it. You, you feel the pain. Now listen to me. Fasting is not a gift. Nobody has the gift of fasting. Everybody make a choice to fast. Everything you feel inside of you as a member, every pastor also feels the same thing. We feel hungry when we are fasting too. But it is a choice. You know, at the early days of this fast, maybe let me quickly help you, like tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, 12 to 1 is always very dangerous. How many of you know I'm talking about? 11, 12, 1, there is a battle. Pastor, do you feel the same thing? Why not? We feel the same thing. But once you cross over 1, you have crossed over. You have crossed over. Because you won't know when it's already 5 o'clock. So when your body is demanding for something by 11, 12, say no way. No way. Refuse to look at anywhere. By the time you cross over to 1 p.m., you have already crossed over. The same thing Tuesday, Wednesday, by Thursday. Forget it. Forget it. No one here will miss one day in Jesus' mighty name. Every item in every prophetic agenda 
requires prayer and fasting for delivery, including the agenda for dominion. Don't sit down that God has spoken. No. Every prophecy does not come to pass automatically. Men have to provoke it into fulfillment. Like we read that First Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Also, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. I have given you the land, but yet go and contain them in battle in order to possess it. You contain. Until you contain, you can't possess. So, there is no automatic fulfillment. Dominion is guaranteed for you, but you must pray and fast to ensure that it becomes a reality. Now, what is dominion? God's servant gave us one or two definitions in the second service. What is dominion? The dominion God has packaged for you and I in the year 2019. Dominion means to gain absolute control over the affairs of your life. Every day of your life, your finances, your heads. That the devil is no more in charge. You are in charge. You are in charge. That is dominion. Dominion means having it the way you want it. Not the way the devil wants it. Now listen to me. This year has God live it. And by the word I have gone forth out of the mouth of his servant. The devil will not determine the outcome of your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ. The way you desire it, that is the way it shall be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. If that thing is louder, you are catching it right now. What is dominion? It is having authority from on high to reign in life. Authority, power from on high. And we know such power is procured on the altar of prayer and fasting. Revelation 5 verse 10, Revelation 5 10, He has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign. We shall dominate on the earth. What is dominion? Dominion means to be the head and not the tail. So he said, yeah. The Trumpet chapter 28 verse 13. He shall be the head and not the tail. Dominion talks about supremacy. It talks about superiority. And that shall be your experience. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But Matthew 17 verse 21 Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said, this kind, I know you love all those definitions of dominion, he said, but this kind does not come by just eating and eating 24-7. He said, it comes by what? Prayer and fasting. This kind, this kind, this kind. So I like for you to make up your mind to pay the price. The greater the value, the bigger the price. So the price you are ready to pay determine the level of dominion you will operate in this year 2019. The door of dominion is open to every winner. But I can tell you, every one of us cannot operate at the same realm of dominion. The price determines the level, the realm. But I pray for you, as you pay the price, you will assess higher realm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, as we engage this prayer and fasting, what are the benefits? What are the benefits we, we tend to assess as we engage this prayer and fasting? Number one, prayer and fasting facilitate fulfillment of prophecy. We have said that. Isaiah 58, 6 and 9, this is the fast I have chosen to break the band of wickedness to undo the everybody. He said, then, verse 9, when you call, then I will answer. It facilitates spiritual fulfillment of prophecies. Number two, God's servant told us the last service that it enhances our level of spirituality. Level of spirituality. One of the benefits of fast is that it kills the flesh. God's servant Bishop Abbey said fasting is to fasting the flesh. Like you fasten your best, your seat beds, you squeeze the flesh in order to fatten the spirits. So in the place of fasting, you see that all those, you know, lost evil thoughts and every activity of the flesh does not gain control in the season of fasting. How I many of you are talking about? Yes. Even those that have the, can I call it the gift now? Eh? Not gift of the spirit. Oh. They are blessed with talk, talk. Watch out for talkatish. 
that the extroverts during fasting the talk reduce we are told that every every woman well uh, i stand to be corrected but we are told that every woman every woman has a tendency of 5000 words per hour two of us <laughs> but it doesn't matter how a talkative you are check the time of fasting towards those hours i told you about no no physical strength for that kind of thing <laughs> praise god so when we engage in fasting the flesh is subdued the spirit man gains control in john 3 verse 30 john 3 verse 30 he said that he may increase that is jesus that's the spirit john 3 verse 30 but high the flesh may decrease so that's what happened when we fast fasting and prayer destroy carnality and enhances or boosts our spirituality praise the lord i said praise the lord number three benefit of fasting it grants us access to divine direction access to divine direction ezra chapter 8 and verse 21 ezra chapter 8 and verse 21 ezra proclaimed a fast why he said to seek of God the right way for us. Without divine direction, confusion becomes the order of the day. Many of us in this 21 day, you need to ask God some certain questions. Like God, someone, the presiding bishop, have always said, in prayer, God answer questions. Lord, what is it that I didn't do right 2018 that I need to do right? Baby Christian ask for things. Mature Christian ask for direction. Not just give me things. What must I do to get a thing? He said, You will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk therein. So the answer to every noise of the devil around you, that noise of confusion, is just a voice from the Lord. The Bible says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. When you hear the voice of the Lord, every noise disappears. And can I pray for someone this morning? I stand on behalf of God's servant today. As we engage these 21 days, every noise of confusion in any area of your life that have been hanging around you, in the midst of these 21 days, you shall hear a voice of direction around you. If that is to let your amen catch you right now. Divine direction. Psalm 16 verse 11. He said, Thou will show me the paths of life. For in thy presence, there is what? Fullness of joy. You will show me. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will show you something that will turn your life around this 21 day in the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Benefit number four. Fasting and prayer has the capacity to reverse negative verdicts. I don't know what the negative verdict has been around you medically or whatever. In the midst of this 21 day, it's reversible. The Bible says, with men, these things are impossible. But with God, how many things? Including your own things. Mark 10, 27, all things are possible. And anything possible to God is accessible on the altar of prayer and fasting. Peter was to be killed in Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 10. The Bible says, that same night, as prayer was made, everyone changed the order. <laughs> Modeca was there at the gate. Someone was somewhere planning evil to terminate him over the night. The gallows had been put in place. In Esther chapter 5, you know, you read from um, verse 13 downward. And in chapter 6, that same night, the king could not sleep. I believe the man, Mordecai, was busy praying. Listen to me. It doesn't matter the verdict of the devil is reversible. If they tell you there is anything medically wrong in your life, in this 21 day, it's reversible. Because only God has the final say. Come on, say I hear. So, on the altar of prayer, negative verdicts can be reversed. <laughs> Someone say I hear. Talk to me, say I hear. So, there is nothing impossible for God to do. I had a testimony in, of, in Abuja of a woman that went for operation and through the consent of the husband, because that's the only way to save her life, her womb was removed. Removed and showed to her. And they tell her, you know, she was told that, you know, for bearing of uh, children is over for life. And they agreed, planning to adopt. 
But sometimes in this in season like this, 2017, they went to a man of God and the man of God poured oil upon them and said, that case is reversed. They didn't even tell him the situation. It just by proof, you know, inspiration. That case is reversed. And before you know it, the woman without a womb conceives. This is a testimony. The day of delivery, it was CS. That testimony said, when the doctor opened her up, both the doctor and the nurse ran out of the theater. Because what they saw was like a pouch with two, with two hands. A pouch. As if they tied the other side and tied the other side. They have never seen it. It's not a womb. It's a pouch carrying the baby and the baby was dangling. They ran out and ran in. That we have never seen things like this. But the baby was delivered and brought to the altar for testimony. We serve a God of reversal. Can I pray for you? On behalf of God's servant, I decree anything negative around you in the midst of these 21 days, it shall be reversed in the name of Jesus Christ. There is nothing negative that cannot be reversed. That is why you must consciously engage in these 21 days. Not religiously. Don't do it because what are you doing? Like God someone said, no, in our church we are doing 21 days. No. No. You must you must engage it with a desire. Lord, these 21 days must not leave me with this situation. You must. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I know someone will experience such power these 21 days. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, I say in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Like we earlier said, the last days are the days of power. So I say power. You know, the Bible says, in the end time, perilous time shall come. Evil days shall come. The Bible says that the dark places of the heart, full of habitation of wickedness. Wickedness everywhere. You don't need to offend anybody to be offended. No. The life is where we do is an offense to some people. That is why we must be empowered. The only language they them understand is the language of power. So I say I hear. I can't hear you. Say I hear. We are in the days of power. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. Psalm 110, verse 1. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies. What? Can, can, you, can you make it? What's God making your enemy right now? Your footstool. You will march on top of your enemies. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the day of what? Of thy power. Someone shout power. Shout it, let me hear you say power. We are in the days of power. But it takes prayer and fasting to assess this power. Psalm 63, verse 1. It says, O Lord, my God, early will I seek thee. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for ye. That is prayer. Like God someone said, my flesh longer for thee. That is what? Fasting. To do what? Verse 2. To see that power. When the power comes, the glory follow. You can't carry power with agony at the same time. The reason why some affliction is still existing in the life of some of us is because our power level is below the opposition. When you, when you enhance your spiritual capacity, you will know that the devil is not as powerful as you thought. So, one of the things we should believe God for in these 21 days is power. Once you are empowered, every other thing answer to anyone in charge. Am I talking at all? That is why politicians will do anything to what? To secure power. Because once you are empowered, even your, your cough is something. When they are empowered, everything answer. So, one major thing you should believe God for this 21 day is what? Empowerment. When you are empowered, your marital case will be settled. When you are empowered, your financial issue will be settled. He said, I'm a man under authority. That, that man in, you know, in, in um, um, Matthew chapter 8. He said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one, go, he goes. I said to one, come, and he comes. That is dominion. Saying it and seeing it. But that is all, only accessible by what? By power. And power comes 
by prayer and fasting. Someone say here. Even Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> until he went into fasting in Matthew chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and returned with power, he could not fulfill destiny. He was just a carpenter's son, a savior of the world, just doing carpenter and selling table and chairs until he was led. And the Bible says in, Luke, in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, and he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost. And from that moment, level change. Story change. Someone is under the sound of my voice today. After these 21 days, you are returning a changed person. I don't know where you are right now, but these 21 days is changing your level supernaturally. If that is you, your amen will catch it louder right now. Thank you, Jesus. Also, the last days are the days of vengeance. Someone say vengeance. Can I hear you like say vengeance? Yeah. What is vengeance? Vengeance is God showing the enemy his other side. God is not just God of mercy. He's <laughs> also God the killer. Are you aware? Ah! <laughs> Our God is a merciful God to his children. But to the enemy, he's not a merciful God. He's a killer God. <laughs> omnipotent. I used to say jokingly, it's not just omnipotent, it's also omnikiller. That means he can kill anybody at any time, anywhere. Vengeance, he said, Psalm 94, verse 1. Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Do what? Show thyself. Because until God shows up, the devil won't shut up. We are in the days of vengeance. These 21 days, God of vengeance will be rising on our behalf. Let me hear a louder amen. That person that vowed that you'll never be married. If he didn't change, you'll be married while he's in the grave in the name of Jesus. Right? <laughs> Jesus said, Vengeance belongeth to me. And I will repay. I will repay. I will repay. You know, we had a testimony one time sent from Kinaland. This lady had been passing through a man of affliction. In a dream. A woman will come and be fighting with her. He said, one of these nights, when the woman appeared after, after she has generated power on the altar of prayer and fasting, she took the man to in the dream and wiped the woman's face. Maybe some of you still remember that testimony. Wipe the woman's face. And that was all. The God of vengeance arose. Not knowing the strange woman was the mother. The mother began to confess. The woman, the lady had been buried for 14 years. Anytime she took in, the woman will appear. That's the end. The mother began to confess that your father, your father that suddenly left his job and become a gate man or security guard, he said, I'm the one responsible. Your younger brother that left South Africa and became bus driver in Lagos, he said, I'm the one responsible. And for your 14 years of burying her, he said, I'm the one responsible. She confessed and died. And from that moment, Story change. Story change. Story change. Listen to me. In this season of 21 days, vengeance will answer. Anyone hanging around you pretending to be your friend. You know there are people that can be doing you and still be pitying you. I stand on behalf of God's servant today. Within these 21 days, vengeance must answer in the name of Jesus. Sir. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I had a testimony of a lady, a winner. I've been under marital siege with her three other siblings. I, we did it, I think we did one of the days of the fasting. She went home in the night and began to pray and sprinkle the anointing. One old woman in the compound woke up in the morning and said, my daughter, this thing you are spraying can keep us in your... The smell, the smell, it can keep us in the same here. The next night, the same thing. My daughter, this thing you are spraying, the smell can keep us in your... <laughs> Fire continue. The third day, this lady continue. Rako Shakata sprinkled the anointing around the house. By the time they woke up the third day, Mama has expired. And when, now listen, while they were packing her body, 
Under her bed, they saw a padlock. When they opened the padlock, they saw papers inside. When they removed the paper, is the name the names of this girl and her sibling padlock inside the padlock. Satanic wickedness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? These 21 days, vengeance will answer for you. And let me hear your ladder. Amen. In Israel, if Pharaoh didn't die, he will still bring them back to Egypt. Are you aware? So, yes, there are people that there is nothing you do, they can't repent. If you wait for them to repent, you will regret. So, God of vengeance to arise. And do what? Kill them. Those that must be buried for you to be carried forward. These 21 days, heaven will bury them for you. Anyone that needs to flourish, to perish for you to flourish. These 21 days, the God of vengeance will make it happen for you in the name of Jesus. Sir. Pharaoh was buried in the Red Sea. And that was the reason why they were able to assess the Canaan land. Vengeance. Vengeance. That is the only way to put an end to the wickedness of the wicked. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11, the Bible says, Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11, because sentence against evil work is not executed speedily. They said nothing will happen, nothing will happen. He said, therefore, the heart of the sons of men, the evil men, is fully set in them to keep doing evil. But someone said, no more. So we said, no more. So these 21 days, no more. No more. I said, no more. I said, no more. I said, no more. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. But as I ran off, don't forget. Prayer and fasting is the key. Don't toy with it. Don't because of food like Esau say your bad rights. Use 21 days to engage the remaining, the remaining days of the year. 21 days. You can't die. Say, I can't die. You can't die. You can't die. You can't die. Fasting will fast track answers to that prayer. But finally, for our prayer to be answered, Number one, we must engage it from the heart. A praying heart. Proverbs 16 verse 1, the preparation of the heart, a man. Proverbs 16 verse 1, an answer of the tongue is from God. Preparation of the heart. Preparation of the heart. Preparation of the heart. Anna, in 1 Samuel 1 verse 13, was engaging. Her, her, her voice was not heard, but she was engaging in the heart. <laughs> God does not only listen to voice God also listens to the heart In fact God checks the heart before he hears the voice The woman with the issue of blood The Bible says she said in her heart Matthew 9 verse 21 to 23 She said in her heart That's prayer If I can only touch the hem of his garments Ensure your heart is engaged In this prayer and fasting And number two you must be born again. God servant told us in the, in the second survey, you must settle everything today at this communion table. Settle everything. Any, now, for anyone to carry any offense over to tomorrow, it shows that you are not ready. No offense. Offense can be like little, little forces that spoil the vine. Hatred. Malice. Anyone that you are keeping in mind, I know. What she did is so painful, but let go. Let go. So that the devil won't take away your blessing. Let go. Settle anything with anybody. Settle with your God. In Job chapter 22, verse 21. Job 22 and verse 21. As we, as we close, he said, I quit now. When? Come on, when? Now, now. I quit now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. The next verse, the next verse, it says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in the heart. Verse 23, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Say amen. amen. And, and thou shalt put what? 
iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Now verse 27. What will happen now? Verse 27. For time. Jump. He said, then thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. It's not prayer first. Settle with him first. The first prayer of the sinner, God answer, is the prayer of forgiveness. He said, then you will make your prayer unto him. And what will happen? He shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vow. Next verse. He said, thou shalt also decree a thing. In this prayer and fasting. And it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine unto thy way. Verse 29, the last verse right now. He said, when men are saying, there is what? A cast down. Thou shalt say, there is a lifting up. And it shall save the humble person. You are blessed. I say you are blessed. May God bless this word in your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Before God's servant comes right now to lead us to partake of this communion, it's communion for strength. He told Elijah, he said, eat, eat now, because the journey is far. Eat. And as we take this spiritual food, it will take us beyond 21 days. Amen. Let me hear your louder, amen. amen. Therefore, in case you under the sound of my voice, you need to come and acquaint your ways with God. You are not genuinely born again. You are in church, but you are not in touch. Or you have been born again, but as I'm talking, the, the Holy Spirit is convicting you that you need to come and acquaint and reconcile. Ask for mercy in some areas of your life. Give me that privilege on the behalf of God's servant to pray for you. He said, when you do that, then you will make your prayer to the Lord. Then you will decree it and heaven will confirm it. I'd like for you to therefore rise to your feet, wherever you are. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? You have not been born again at all. You have actually been born again. But you just felt convicted that you need to come and ask God for mercy. In order for your 21 days not to be in vain. In order for it not to be just an hunger strike. Wherever you are right now, please rise to your feet. Pick up your Bible, your bag, anything you came to church with and be on the way to the altar. God is speaking to someone right now. He said, I quit now. 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 In the accepted time. He said, today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Somebody is listening to me right now and the devil is telling you they'll be looking at you. Don't mind who is looking at you. This is an individual journey. Don't be mindful of who is looking at you. I know the spirit is touching you to rise now. Rise right now in the name of Jesus. That devil that wants to hold you back, he just wants to rob you. He wants to rob you of your blessing. Come right now. Come and ask God for mercy these two minutes and heaven will forgive you. And it will be your turn for a change of level these 21 days. Church, I thought you are celebrating God on their behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is seated there. One, two, three people are seated there. Don't allow the devil to deceive you. Come, come right now. Come right now. The only thing is touching your heart. Your heart is beating right now. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. That devil is a liar. Tell the devil, leave me alone. I am going to reconcile my way. I'm going. I'm going. Because it's my season of dominion. Season of dominion. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Thank you, Father. Those of us in front, place your right on your chest. And leave the left one up as a sign of surrender to God. See, after me, say, Lord Jesus, I've had your word. I've responded to your word. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Wash me by your blood. Thank you, Jesus. As I engage in 21 days tomorrow, let it be my season for dominion. Thank you for saving me. Grant me the grace never to return to my seven ways again. In Jesus' name I pray. It's as simple as that. Let me pray for you. I pray for you on the behalf of God's servant this morning. Grace of God. We answer for you. Your sins by his blood is already forgiven and cleansed. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus the communion name. is not a church doctrine. It's a divine mystery of scriptures. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23 to 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 23 to 30, for I have received, Paul speaking, I have received of the Lord 
that which also I deliver unto you, I have received of the Lord. So the communion is a divine mystery. I received of the Lord. He said, this thing I want to say is not my words. This is what I have received from the Lord. And I'm delivering it to you that the same night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he has given thanks, he broke it. Somebody say, how big it is bread that he cannot just eat? Why is he breaking it? He's only demonstrating to us that which we take from the communion. He broke the bread, saying, my own body, this is my body. And this, my body, has been broken for you. That's why he went through all those troubles on the cross. They beat him. They tore his skin. He said, my body was broken for you so that your own will not be broken. Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do, do this do in remembrance of many times you are taking the communion. Understand and remember that the body of Jesus was broken. My own is not permitted to be broken. So all through these 21 days, no one's health, health will break down. That amen is too weak. Likewise, next verse, after this manner also, he took the cup and he sobbed, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Testament simply means will. This do ye, as often as you do, also remember, His blood was shed so that yours and mine will not be shed. What do you want is a lamb that was slain to receive for us all manners, blessing, honor, strength. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. To receive for us, his blood was shed to receive for us power. Riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. All this virtue you are taking by the communion today. Every issue of shame in your life must be swallowed up today. Anyone that came here weak, that weakness will be swallowed up now. I was slain. I shed my blood to receive these things. My will for you is to enjoy all these things. He shed his blood so that his will becomes effective in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. His will. His will. You know why Jesus had to die? Just like in the human life. If your father has plenty of estates and inside his will when he was to die, inside his will, he has put your name there. Oh, I give these three estates. This one at Ejeba. The other big one in uh, Plantain City. And the other one in M NMPC quarters. I put it, I will it, I give it to this, my son. Pastor Folonjo. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As long as that man is alive, even though he has signed the will, legally that will has no power. But the day that man dies, immediately you just confirm that he's dead and properly dead. That will comes to force. I'm not saying you should go and kill your father. Praise the name of the Lord. Until he's dead, that will has no force. That's why Jesus had to die. He died so that his will for our life will come to force. Praise the Lord. 
So he shed his blood so that everything that is in his will will come to pass in your life and my life. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. His will is for you to prosper. His will for you to live in sound health. His will for you is to, to, to advance. His will for you is to, to, to be great. Because he has died, he has shed his blood. That will is in force. So anytime you partake of the communion, you must remember that somebody has paid the price. The devil cannot stop you. And in verse 30 of that first Corinthians chapter 11, Paul ended it this way. He said, now, now look at, let me summarize the whole blessing of the communion. For this cause, many people take this thing either without knowledge or they don't even know why they take it. For this reason, many are weak, sickly, and many sleep they die. Why? Because they don't even know that provision has been made. If they know, they will never be weak because the commun communion is for strength. If they know, they will never be sick because the communion is a toast for total health. Of divine health. It's a supernatural meal that guarantees supernatural health. If they know they won't die. Many sleep. So when you take the communion with that understanding, then each time you take it, strength, divine health, longevity, long life. In First Kings chapter 19, talking about the account of Elijah, he was discouraged because Ahab was pursuing him. After that exploit, after killing 450 prophets of Baal, he started pursuing him. He ran for his life. And then he got to a point. After three days' journey in the wilderness, he sat under a juniper tree, discouraged. Enough is enough. Ah, how can God be watching? A woman is pursuing me like this, wants to kill me. That's the prophet who has just done exploit. To be discouraged is human. Praise the name of the Lord, is human. Maybe all through last year you expected so much and then you didn't get what you expect and you ended up the year discouraged. And then 21 days of fasting is about to start. Satan is already whispering to you, what of the one you did last year? What of the one you did last year? What of the one you did mid middle of the year? All those ones combined together. How many? How many? Up to now, nothing has happened. You won't you want start another one again. You just they waste your time. Felt so discouraged. That was the state of Elijah. He felt so discouraged. He sat under the juniper tree. He said, Oh God, enough is enough. Take my life. Ah, take my life. And then God sent an angel. Said, but even if I'm going to take your life, must you die hungry? So that people will think it's hunger that kill you. No. The angel taught him, Arise and eat. Receive strength. The journey is long and great. He came again, arise, and fed him with the heavenly me. And he went to that journey, 40 long days, full of strength and life. That's what the communion will do today. It will destroy every discouragement in your life. It will impact onto you supernatural strength. All through these 21 days, Elijah went 40 days. This one is just 21. All through these 21 days, every Passing day, you'll be getting stronger. That amen is not strong enough. You'll be getting stronger. Spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus. And if there be any hindrance, any impurity, anything that can hinder your prayers from being answered these 21 days, as you partake of this communion, God will cleanse it. Every trace of unrighteousness shall be swept off. In the name of Jesus. Your heart shall be parched with this blood. And then you are set for these 21 days of great testimonies in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your voice, Lord, as I partake of this communion. I receive a touch. 
I receive supernatural strength. As I partake of this communion, weakness is caused. Discouragement dies. By this communion, Lord, I receive supernatural strength. By this communion, every negative medical verdict is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayer. If there be any health challenge in the life of anyone here now, by this communion, it is swallowed up in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that has the propensity to stop you from the full benefit of these 21 days is caused by this communion in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare this table blessed. Let it be your life. Let it be an injection of life. In the name of Jesus, this table is blessed. It becomes your blood. It becomes your flesh. In Jesus' mighty name. In the life of Jesus that have just been impacted unto you today. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayer. I command that supernatural strength upon you in the name of Jesus. All through these 21 days, no breaking down in the name of Jesus. I decree open heavens for you these 21 days. Your answers will come speedily in the name of Jesus. Everyone will have an encounter, personal encounter with God in the name of Jesus. New revelations for you. New directions for you. Greater heights for you. In the name of Jesus. The God of this commission will visit with you this week. In Jesus mighty name. You are blessed. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. God bless you.